Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. All right. Well, uh, welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio Home Buyer Workshop. What are we in? Number four, this right? Four, yeah. Unit number four. So today we are going to be talking about FHA. But first, I want to bring you guys through a couple of things that you need to know. So we're going to hope that my clicker is working at the moment. Oh, Let's see on. what happens here. There. And look at that. We got it going. So the first thing you guys do is download the phone app. Text mom to 36260. Mm-hmm. Why do you guys want the phone app? You guys can run payments. That is the most important thing with the phone app. It is so easy for you. Everybody is going to get a different loan, and that is the section of the workshop that we are in. Last week, we worked on VA loans, and so if you don't know about VA loans and you have the benefit, you are a vet or you are active duty, that's National Guard or you know, any of the branches of the military, you guys are, you do have your benefit for a VA loan. So if you want to know more about those, go to our Home Buyer Workshop 2021 folder and download the video. That way you guys know all of the different benefits and what you guys can do with your VA loan. Today we're going to be talking about FHA, but everybody is doing a different kind of loan. You're, we've got USDA loans, VA loans, FHA loans, conventional loans, jumbo loans, less than 20% down, mortgage insurance. There's so much to it that the the actual phone app will run those payments for you and they will calculate all of that information the right way so that you're not guessing what will my mortgage payment be. So pretty cool. You can also contact us. You can send me an email. You can send Heidi an email. You can call the office. You guys can check us out right here on YouTube, right from the phone app. You can apply for your loan from the phone app. I don't know about all of you, but when I go home, I do not want to deal with a computer. So I love my phone. So if I can do an application from my phone, that's the way that I'm going to do it. So make sure you guys text the word mom to 36260 so that you have all of that information right at your fingertips. Trust me, it is so helpful when you are window shopping on Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com. You guys know what that house might, might actually cost you. So pretty, pretty cool. All right, so next, how do you guys contact us? So we've got the phone app. We've got Facebook. We are streaming live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So again, one of these days, I am going to get a gamer to call me and do a loan. There will be one day that that happens. So um, we are we are streaming live on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. You guys can find us there. You can call us as always. It's 844-935-3634. That's 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU, and that is the number four. So 844-WE-LEND-FOR-YOU. And then Yelp, hey, if we are helping you guys out, even if you haven't worked with us, you're getting the education that you need, you're getting the information that you want, please go to Yelp, please look us up, and please give us a review. We would love that. Google's fantastic as well. Anywhere at all that you guys can give us a review, we are very, very grateful for. So we're going to get into FHA. And we're going to talk about how do you determine what loan program is best for you. So I did go through this a little bit last week, and there are all different kinds of loan programs. Like I mentioned, there's FHA, VA, USDA, conventional. Uh, What are some of the things, Heidi, that you think about when you're trying to decide what loan program that you want to put somebody in? So first thing I want to know is their down payment, right? What type of funds assets, liquid assets, do they have access to and what are they looking to utilize? The second thing I want to look at is what is their credit score? What do they look at? And then I also want to look at what are, is their income and what are their debts? So, you know, what type of debt to income ratio, which you've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Their housing ratio, and then their all in ratio. Am I looking at? Because that's going to help me decide possibly what the best program is. A lot of people shy away from FHA, but I'll tell you, I was working on a loan just yesterday that FHA actually gave them a better rate, gave them a lower mortgage insurance, because either way they were going to have the mortgage insurance. Right. But the rate was a point and a half lower going FHA than the conventional type loan that they were looking at. 
So, and I really could use those higher ratios that are allowed with FHA. So those are kind of the larger scheme of parameters that I'm going to look at when I'm deciding what program to look at for them. Absolutely. And if you guys are listening on Saturday, you guys cannot see the PowerPoint that we're going through. There's a ton of information up on the screen. So I got to tell you, go to YouTube, find us and actually pull up our, our show from today. Watch this, look at the actual PowerPoints, read what is on the screen. It's all kinds of information about how do we determine which loan program works best for you. But today's show is actually about FHA. So we're going to flip the screen and we're going to talk about FHA loan programs and what the benefits are of those. So the first thing that comes up is three and a half percent down payment. This is absolutely amazing because many programs need more. You know, if you're if you're trying to get into uh, you're in L.A., let's say you're in uh, Los Angeles County, which, again, every single county is going to have a little bit different loan limit. But if you're in Los Angeles County, you can actually get a loan amount up to $822,000. That means that you can buy something for just under nine hundred, and you guys have to do the calculation backwards. But if you're putting the minimum down payment down, it might be eight sixty. dollars We're going to get to that eight twenty two dollars loan amount with only 3.5% down. So that is pretty amazing as far as FHA goes. Other counties do have different loan limits. Some of them are in high balance, high cost areas like Los Angeles. If you are in Texas, you do not get high balance loan limits. If you are in Riverside County, you do not get high balance loan limits. So it really does depend on where you're at, but the loan limits are there and FHA with 3.5% down is really, really great. So the next thing is, is more lenient credit guidelines. So uh, Heidi, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about this because since you're on and we're doing this live, I don't want to feel like I have to talk through the whole 10 minutes of PowerPoint. So I'm going to let you take okay. the more lenient guidelines. Got it. Okay. So um, as far as the credit guidelines go, and I might be totally wrong because I love when Debbie throws me out there. Um, <laughs> Always. God, credit line guidelines. I don't even know if I know the credit guidelines, to be honest. All right. Well, I, I think do. you have to. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they are more there are more lenient guidelines. So, for example, if you have had a bankruptcy, if it was extenuating circumstances, somebody was very ill, you lost somebody lost a job, at least a minimum of. 30% of your income has been lost from the year before, and that's what created the bankruptcy. You can actually do a new loan with FHA after one year. If you do not have extenuating circumstances, you just charge them credit cards up, you are really bad about it, financial mismanagement, you've got to wait two years. With a conventional loan, we're at three years and four years, so significantly longer. With a foreclosure, you've got a four-year time frame if it was extenuating. So again, did you lose your house because somebody lost a job, somebody got ill, and you were, you know, couldn't work, you were very, very sick, tons of medical bills. If it was extenuating, you can literally do a loan after three years of foreclosure, four years if it was just financial mismanagement. Where a conventional loan, you're at seven years. So many of them are very more, much more lenient guidelines when it comes to the derogatory remarks or things that could be on the credit report. If you have questions about have had, having had a short sale or collection accounts, give us a call. We'll go through that with you. But even with collection accounts, they're pretty lenient. If it's medical, you do not have to even pay it off. If it is over, what is our aggregate balance? 2500 That is right. So if you have a bunch of collections accounts on your credit report and they're under $2,500 in total, so we're going to add them all up, but if it is under $2,500, you do not have to pay them off. If it is over $2,500, you will have to pay those off. So again, But that medical, doesn't include medical. Right. Medical excluded. So, you know, again, FHA is very, very lenient. I love to call it the do-over loan. If your credit score is lower, you've got low down payment, you've had some issues in the past with the credit report, FHA is a fantastic loan unless you have a VA benefit then we're going to talk about VA. But other yeah. than that, FHA is the next go-to. It is the do-over loan. It, it really is fantastic. And um, what's our minimum credit score? Is it 580? 580, yes. So okay. definitely much, much better, much easier to qualify for. Conventional loan, you need to have at least a minimum of a 620. And many, many times, even if we try to decision the loan with the 620 underwriting guideline, 
we still cannot get an approval. You typically need to be a little bit higher than that to get it through the computer system, 640, 660. So FHA is much, much lenient on those credit guidelines. So debt to income ratio, you want, you want to take a stab at this one? Yes. Okay. I can do this one. All I right. got this one. I love it. Okay. So debt to income ratio for an FHA is a lot more lenient. So we can go up to a 46.9%. I'm going to be really specific yes. on your housing ratio. So that is your housing cost divided by your income. Okay. Now your total income, so that's your housing costs and all of your debt on your credit report, we can go up to a 569 we just have to stay under a 57, all in debt to income ratio, where a conventional loan, we cannot go above 50. Right. 49.9999. 49.9999. Right. And again, sometimes we have to be below that, but right. we can get generally a decision at a 46.9 and a 56.9 on an FHA. So we have a lot more room to play with on an FHA. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, so what Heidi was talking about, you guys will sometimes hear lenders refer to a front-end debt ratio and a back-end debt ratio. Front-end debt ratio is just the actual house payment, property taxes, insurance, the entire ball of wax rolled into one divided by your income, that is your front-end. Your back-end debt ratio is your housing payment, plus all of your monthly debts, your car payments, your student loans, your personal loans, everything, credit cards, whatever you've got going on in other debts, that is all of it with the housing payment divided by your income. So FHA is gonna be much, much more lenient in those uh, guidelines as far as the debt ratio and allow you to qualify for a little bit more. So even if you have perfect credit, fantastic job, nothing derogatory, you know, even 10% down, if you're trying to get into a home that's a little bit more expensive than what conventional would allow with your debt ratio, an FHA loan might be the right fit for you. So just because maybe you don't have a lower credit score, maybe you've got perfect income, maybe you have a, you know, a bigger down payment than 3.5%, FHA still may be the best solution for you. And that is why we tell you that you have to call us and talk to us about you and your scenario so that we can determine which loan program is going to be the best fit. So um, debt ratios, FHA is absolutely awesome. So low mortgage insurance premiums. So this one is a good one, and me and Heidi will both talk about this one. Mortgage yep. insurance you're going to pay if you have less than 20% down. That is on any loan whatsoever. Conventional loan, you do have options to buy out mortgage insurance, pay it monthly, split it up. You can pay a little bit up front to make it a little bit cheaper monthly. There's a lot of options with conventional. But conventional is based on your property type, your debt ratio, your credit score, and the loan amount. And actually, how many people are on the loan, believe it or not. Right. And they're going to actually determine what that mortgage insurance premium will be. So if your credit score is a little bit lower, you're going to end up with a much higher mortgage insurance premium monthly than what you would with an FHA loan. FHA is one standard rate across the board. It doesn't matter if you have an 800 credit score. doesn't matter if you have a 580. Everybody gets the same mortgage insurance premium. So if you have a 3% down and you're trying to do a conventional loan and you've got a 660 credit score, you're probably better getting a cheaper monthly payment by rate and mortgage insurance with an FHA loan. Um, Heidi, did I miss anything that you want to mention on that? No, you know, the only thing I would mention is when you have a loan to value of, let's just say you're putting 5% down conventional, it's the ratio of the mortgage insurance. You have different levels, right? You have to get a 35% of, if you're more than 95% loan to value, you've got 35% coverage. Then you've got 30% coverage. Then you have 25% coverage. So as your loan to value goes down and then they have all the other parameters that go in two people, first time home buyer, uh, you know, whether the system approves you automatically or not debt ratio, um, yeah. your debt ratios, your credit score. So, all of those are factoring in, whereas FHA just across the board is the same. Right. And then the rate also generally 
most of the time is going to be higher on that conventional when you have less down your credit scores maybe not in the top tiers so fha a lot of times is going to be your better bet right Absolutely. Did you guys all hear Lori sneezing back there? I did. <laughs> she feels so bad. She's about ready to cry right now. <laughs> she's like, oh my goodness, I'm in a recording studio. Well, she's allergic to me. <laughs> she's probably, yeah, she's probably allergic to Matt because he's got cats. <laughs> That's how we started the show. You got to get the hairless ones, Matt. <laughs> Right, exactly. All right, so FHA for all of you guys out there that are looking to do a refinance and maybe you don't have the greatest of credit scores, we can still do a cash out refinance up to 80% of the value of your home. So cash out is an option with FHA. So just because somebody says you don't qualify conventional, maybe you had that bankruptcy, maybe you had that you know uh, foreclosure, FHA is still an option. We can still try to get you guys that money out. So definitely give us a call. We can go through that with you. But that is a piece of the FHA puzzle. Uh, moving on to, again, another uh, refinance piece of FHA. If you have an FHA loan right now today, just like I mentioned last week in the VA loan, we can do a streamlined refinance. So basically, we are going to verbally verify where you work, and we are going to pull your credit, and we're going to put your application together, drop your interest rate, and close your loan. So it's pretty simple refinance to get a better interest rate for, you know, better interest rate, lower monthly payment, and you don't really have to do a whole lot in order to get that. So streamlined refinances are pretty awesome, but you do have to have an FHA loan right now. We can't do a streamline if you don't have one. So, um, but if you're thinking about getting one, this is gonna be a benefit down the road for you. If interest rates were to drop, which let's face it, as of today, interest rates are so low, I don't think that they're going any lower. Um, right. But in the future, <laughs> <laughs> rates are 5%, and then all of a sudden they drop to 2 You guys can take advantage of that streamline. Let's be honest. We've said that before. We don't <laughs> think rates are going to drop. We have, yeah. It'll be interesting to see when we get into the so, negatives, right? Like, let's just keep right. money. Oh, whoops. I didn't say that out loud. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> this is not... This is this is not a uh, we're not we're not we're not talking politics right now. This is not a no. this is not no, a political no. show. All right. So uh, what else is with FHA? So rates are historically lower rates with an FHA loan than conventional loans, and this is very true. As Heidi had mentioned a little bit earlier, as we just got into this and got started, she actually priced somebody on an FHA versus the conventional. They were three percent down. Heidi, where was the credit score on that one? Uh, it was a 663, I believe. Okay, so not horrible credit. It wasn't horrible. No, but nope. it's a 663 credit score, 3% down payment. They're buying their first house, and the mortgage insurance was cheaper, and the interest rate was a point and a half lower. Yes. That, that, that's huge. That is a very, very huge. big difference. So, again, it, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, trust me. They were not sad they had to go FHA. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to pick the right loan for you. We're going to make sure that you understand what your options are. Obviously, if you want that conventional loan, maybe you've got reasons behind it, then we're going to put you in it. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're not the Gestapo, uh, but we are here to recommend what might be the best option for you. So that is one of the uh, benefits of an FHA loan is that their interest rates have been historically over time lower than what a conventional loan is. And then um, loan limits. The loan limits are on FHA are a little bit different. They're not standard to the conventional loan. They are not FHA, or I'm sorry, they're not uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loan limits. So they do change by county. They change quite drastically. So depending on the state that you are looking in, the county that you are looking in, we have to actually look up what loan limit that you can go to for your area. Um, but here in Los Angeles County, where we're sitting, where well, where I'm sitting, not where <laughs> not where Heidi's sitting, um, but nope. where I'm sitting, where my butt is in the seat, we can go up to eight hundred twenty-two thousand three seventy-five in that loan limit. Now, if we get into again Riverside, San Bernardino counties, that's significantly lower. It's in the four hundred range. I want to say it's four seventy-four, and I have to actually pull that up. I don't know it off the top of my head. I wish I was, mm. I wish I had one of those brains that never forgot anything, like the photogenic memory, but I don't. So it's uh, four. I think it's four seventy-four in Riverside, San Bernardino. San Bernardino County, um, San Diego, you are a little tiny bit lower than Los Angeles County, Orange County, you're the same as Los Angeles, Ventura County, you're slightly lower than LA. Uh, if you are in um, Texas, Illinois, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, Washington, 
and I might have missed a couple that I'm licensed in Idaho you guys have totally different guidelines totally different loan limits you have to call me I've got to look it up I need to know what county that you're in I can look it up and let you know what your loan limit would be so um, that is pretty much everything about FHA is there anything Heidi that we did not bring up that we didn't mention that you feel is really important for people to know yes okay one big thing yes so if you are married and you are in a uh, what is it? A community, community, state? property, state, community, property, state. We do. If you're going on the loan by yourself, please keep in mind. If you are legally married, we do have to run your spouse's credit and we, you have to qualify with their debt. So we don't have to put them on the loan. We don't have to use their credit score but you do have to qualify with their debt if you're in a community property state. Yes. So California is a community property state. I don't even know if Arizona is. Arizona mm. community property state? I have no I idea. Feel like I it, live here, I but I don't know. know. You know, I honestly, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's impossible to know every single answer. So you just stop me. I'm going to give right. you the bell on that one. Heidi asked a question that the mortgage mom didn't know. Um, we, we have to actually look it up by state. So, for example, Georgia is yeah. not a community property Georgia state. Georgia is not. We do so not. we don't have to run the spouse's credit. Correct. But if you are in a community property state and you want to do an FHA by yourself, that's fine. But we do still need to run your spouse's credit. And you do have to qualify with all their individual debt as well as your own. Yes. So it's something to keep in mind because we do get people that say, but they're not going on the loan. They're not going on title. I don't understand why you're asking me this. And if you're legally separated, but still legally married, that still counts. I absolutely love it. Can, can you hear Lori in the background? I absolutely love it. Um, she's doing a VA loan, and I'm going to tell you guys that VA is exactly the same as FHA. It depends yes. on the state that you're going to. She is actually in the midst right now of buying a home in Texas, and Texas is a community property state, and we do have to run your spouse's credit report, yes, and we is. do have to hit you for their debt, even if they are not on your loan. Now, it doesn't matter in Lori's situation. Her husband, obviously, if he wasn't on the loan with her for any reason, has amazing credit but there if your spouse's credit is awful that is okay we don't care what is on it but you do have to be able to qualify for their debts and that is va or fha again if you are in a community property state uh Correct. aunt Lori just chimed in on facebook said arizona is a community po property state well there you go so if you are in Thank arizona you, we have got to run your credit your spouse's credit report even if they are not going to be on the loan so um we have got all kinds of sounds going on we got uh Lori sneezing today this is the first time <laughs> that i'm not the cause of most of the problems <laughs> my phone's ringing i got a <laughs> i got a brand new phone today totally 100 percent forgot to put it on uh actual vibrate like it's just i literally just got it up and running right before the show so the phone's ringing she's sno sneezing in the background <laughs> i don't even have the kids making noise upstairs today i know we don't have any them. we have no Physically. chirping from the kids no barking from the dogs but we are not doing a great job of being quiet no. in the studio <laughs> that is for sure <laughs> So anyway, so that is basically to sum up FHA. If you guys have more FHA questions, please, number one, if you're watching, put it in the feed, ask us your questions. Matt's going to read it out loud, and we're going to answer them for you. You guys are watching Saturday morning on, or listening Saturday morning on Go Country. Number one, you guys should be watching us on YouTube. You should be watching us live Wednesdays at 5. Make sure you guys look for Mortgage Mom Radio. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you guys know when we are live. You've got to click it to all so that it does let you know, alerts you that we have gone on live. Um, but if you guys have questions right now, go ahead and put those in the feed, or if it is Saturday morning, give us a call. It's 844-935-3634. Get on my calendar to talk to me. Make an appointment. We're going to talk one-on-one, -on -one, you and me, and we're going to go through your scenario and figure out what we can do for you. Um, so next week, oh, we hey, do look at that. We got one more thing that I didn't bring up. You got this one, Heidi, or you want me to do it? I don't even know what it is. All right. No reserves required. <laughs> so I actually totally forgot that there was one more PowerPoint piece. So uh, yep. with an FHA loan, you do not have to have reserves. 
You do not have to have money in the bank after closing. Many conventional loans, many jumbo loans are going to require that you need reserves. So on an FHA loan, you do have to have reserves if you are buying a multi-unit property, two to four units. VA loan, same thing. But on a one-unit condo, townhome, single-family home, you do not have to have any reserves whatsoever. You can literally get in with just literally to the dollar of what you have available available for down payment and closing costs. So that is it for FHA. Wait, We're wait, gonna wait. get yeah, go. You can also get a gift for a hundred percent of your down payment and closing costs. Yes, you can. Absolutely. And um, and we're going to get to all of the questions that everybody has put in the feed. So please get those in there. We're going to start reading them here in a second. But I do want to let you guys know that next week, which is where I thought I was going with the next click, <laughs> is going to be a conventional loan. We're going to talk about conventional conforming loans, everything about conventional, why they might be better for you than an FHA if you fit into that conventional conforming box. So do not... Um, you know, stay tuned. Make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel. You know when we upload it. Watch us live. Watch us do it. This is great information. We're trying to educate all of you guys and make sure that you have what you need to buy a house this year in 2021. So Matt is going to get rid of our PowerPoint. All right, no we're joke. back. <laughs> no. And there goes there goes Lori. She's like, no joke. Got to buy a house this year. She's working on it in Texas. 